Hey everybody, Log Time here. Um, sorry, I've been uh, quite MIA for about the last six months. Uh, I've been real busy at work uh, programming this new software, and I just had a baby recently as well. So that's why I've been uh, kind of absent these uh, last uh, pretty much all of 2014. Uh, real busy, but I'm back today with a look at the new Serato DJ version 1.7 that just came out today for public beta. This is not the final version, uh, just the public beta. So uh, let's dig right into it and see what's new in 1.7. Now the main new feature in 1.7 is the MIDI panel from Scratch Live that's been um, missing from Serato DJ for quite some time. So uh, if we go right into MIDI at the top, you'll see the somewhat familiar uh, MIDI panel from Scratch Live. Uh, so in here you can map uh, things like scrolling through your library, navigating uh, up, down, left, and right, uh, adding tracks to uh, the prepare list, uh, tabbing through the library. Uh, we have your loop size knobs over here along with the auto loop and roll buttons. Uh, you control uh, absolute relative mode right here as well. Something new is loop shifting, which we'll get into in just a minute. Uh, these are your transport uh, controls, basically uh, fast forward, rewind, uh, load next track, uh, load your track to that particular deck, instant double, uh, save your next cue point or add the temporary cue point as well. And new in Serato DJ now is a filter on each deck. So you don't have to use an FX slot now or to use the, uh, uh, if you want to use a filter. Uh, if you don't have a mixer with a built-in filter in it, like uh, uh, the Range 62 or 64 or the uh, Pioneer, uh, most of the Pioneer DJ mixers, 800, 850, 900, 900 SRT. Uh, so if you just have like a two-channel mixer with uh, no built-in filter now, uh, you don't have to use one of the effects slots to do that. Uh, you basically have a built-in filter on each deck as well. So this is the MIDI panel area in Serato DJ 1.7. Now, some other uh, things that they've added from Scratch Live is sorting cues chronologically. This is a big one a lot of Scratch Live users, which, you know, doesn't really seem like a, you know, a big thing, but apparently it was because a lot of people complained about it or uh, the lack thereof in Serato DJ. Well, uh, so now you can sort your cue points uh, chronologically. So say if you set one at the beginning, but let's say you go to the end of the song to set number two, uh, but then you go back somewhere towards the middle and you set cue point number three. So as you can see, these aren't in time chronologically. We have zero, and then we have a three-minute mark, and then a 140 mark. Uh, so they're not in chronological order, obviously. So if we go into the setup now, under uh, DJ Preferences, you'll see Sort Cues Chronologically. The uh, uh, the famous checkbox from Scratch Live is now here. So if we check that, that will switch those around. So you'll see the 3 o'clock one is now uh, after the 140 mark and uh, not before it. You can also just drag and move the cue point slots around now as well. Um, if you don't have that option check rather so let me uncheck it first of all so now you can move these uh, up or down any particular order that you want uh, not necessarily in chronological order or you can move them pretty much to any other slot that you want so um, you know basically however you see fits so that is a uh, sort cues chronologically or moving your cue points around in any particular slot that you want now another heavily requested feature that was in scratch live that was seemingly absent from Serato DJ was the infamous AM mode or hide your tracks from spying nosy people. So uh, to engage that now, all you have to do is uh, we well, don't have to hit the BPM and then type AM. Uh, and now in Serato DJ, you just have to hold Alt or the option key if you're on a Mac and hit the M. M is in Mary. So Alt plus M will um, basically uh, hide your tracks from the snoopy annoying people that uh, hover over your computer and want to see every track that you're playing and uh, copy you down and uh, you know so uh, am mode uh, alt plus m to show and hide your tracks now um let's see what else is new uh, akai uh, akai just recently announced today actually uh two new controllers for uh serato dj i'm a little hesitant to call them controllers because they're not the controllers in the typical sense like the um uh, the DDJSZ, the SX, uh, any of those type of controllers. These are a little bit different, but quite nifty as well. So basically, uh, Akai, which is uh, owned by Newmark now, I believe. Uh, as we all know, Akai is the famous uh, makers of the MPCs. Uh, well, they came out with two new controllers today, and actually, let me see, I had pictures of them, I believe. Here we go. So instead of looking for them. So two new controllers, the AMX and the AFX. Now, the AMX is basically a tiny two-channel uh, controller. Uh, with the sound card built in. This is DVS uh, capable, so you can hook up your turntables to this or your CDJs and use your uh, timecode CDs. And uh, basically you have a very portable uh, two-channel mixer with Serato DJ. Uh, includes pretty much everything you find on uh, 
you know, typical two-channel mixers, gain, uh, treble, mid, high, uh, filter, very good. And what's really neat is this includes an interfader in it as well. Uh, so I assume one can uh, get down on this and do some cuts. Uh, we have uh, yet to see any demo videos of it in action, but, uh, you know, this is uh, pretty interesting to say the least. Now, the next one is the AFX, and basically this is... Akai and Serato slap in the face to uh, Native Instruments in their Tractor Control X1. Uh, very similar in layout and styling. Uh, you have the uh, touchpad up here, uh, which is uh, included on the Tractor Control X1 MK2, not on the original uh, X1 version, uh, on MK2. Uh, so you have your four um, knobs to control the effects parameters and the uh, associated buttons with it. Uh, you have a loop scroll knob with an LED indicator uh, determine, or showing which uh, loop length you have selected. Then you have RGB pads for the, uh, your cue points, auto looping, manual looping, slicer mode, and the SP6 sampler. So this is uh, basically, you know, Serato and Akai's answer to Native Instruments X1. Uh, I am definitely going to be getting one of these bad boys right here. Uh, so you can expect a full review video and demonstration uh, when it arrives. Um, I'm not sure on the release date yet. I'd assume it's probably going to be next month in September when the 1.7 goes final, uh, but we'll see. And I'm not sure of the price either. I haven't, uh, I don't think that uh, was revealed yet, um, unless I'm mistaken, but I'll take a look at that later. Anyway, so back to Serato DJ version 1.7. Um, other than that, you know, those are the main things in Serato DJ. Obviously, there's a lot of bug fixes. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Um, some important notes, though, is that if you're on... Uh, if you're using a Mac and you're still on Snow Leopard, which I believe is 10.6, uh, the last version was 10.6.8, which is, you know, a very good stable version, but unfortunately it is uh, no longer supported now in 1.7. So if you're on a Mac and you're still on 1.6.8 and you want to use the router DJ, it's time to upgrade to at least um, 10 point, or excuse me, yeah, 10.8 or 10.9 Mavericks. Or even 10.7, but, you know, even that's a year or two old by now. So, and Yosemite's right around the corner, too, 10.10. .10. So, uh, no no more 10.6.8, no more Snow Leopard support in Serato DJ version 1.7. Other than that, though, that is the um, basically the main gist of 1.7. There's one additional feature, which, unfortunately, I cannot show you yet, and that is Serato Flip. Now, this is going to be a game changer, in my opinion. I've seen a demonstration for this, and I have to say it is awesome. There is a little sneak preview demo video of it on Serato DJ's, or excuse me, Serato DJ, Serato's website that explains what it does. Basically, it's a form of non-destructive editing. So basically, you can trigger cue points, and uh, you know, if you're doing finger jumping or just, uh, you know, cue point juggling, uh, you can record and automate all that and then save it into the metadata of the file. And then basically load that up anytime you play that track. So this is actually, there's kind of a lot of things they can do in one. Um, you know, you can make clean versions out of, you know, your dirty versions of your tracks. Uh, without having to go into a separate uh, DAW and edit all the stuff out. What's great about this, as I mentioned, it's all stored in the metadata. So it's, um, you know, it's non-destructive. And obviously you don't have to create separate files, which will increase your hard drive space which you then have to go back and import into uh, Serato DJ, put in your all your crates and stuff. You just keep your same original file, and you can create basic uh, flips for it. All the things you can do, like I said, you can uh, make clean versions out of dirty versions. Uh, but my th the most thing that I'm excited for is skipping over portions of tracks. We all have those tracks that have that uh, annoying verse in it, uh, some singer that no one likes. Um, I'm not so much of a rap, hip-hop, top 40 guy. I'm up strictly house and techno, but even then, you know, EDM songs, well, I hate to use the term EDM, but uh, a lot of the electronic dance music songs have uh, unnecessary long breakdowns, anywhere from a minute up to, God, three, four minute longs of just, just breakdown. Well, now you can basically cut those out. Um, I've been asking for this feature for Scratch Live for years now. Um, it's called Splice, what we call it, or Inverse Loops, or... Exclusion coup points, uh, no matter what you call it, basically it's a way to basically cut out certain parts of your track seamlessly uh, without having to do it uh, separately in the DAW and making a whole separate file for it. Uh, again, because it's all stored in the metadata and you can enable this or disable it on the fly. Uh, it's going to be um, mapped to every controller. 
uh, for uh, Serato DJ, and uh, it's also going to be MIDI mappable as well. So uh, once Serato Flip comes out and available, uh, we'll definitely be demonstrating that. Fortunately, I can't show it to you guys yet. However, Serato is going to be having a little demonstration of it, I believe, uh, for their uh, DJ City webcast uh, webinar. I think it's uh, tomorrow or uh, Wednesday, I'm not sure. So, uh, Serato Flip, that is not available yet. Uh, that is coming once 1.7 goes final, which will be sometime in September. Uh, but Serato Flip, in my opinion, is the big feature of 1.7, and in my opinion, it's going to be a game changer. Because so, there's just a lot of implications of uh, implications of what it can do. I imagine DJ pools are going to start offering flipped versions of tracks, whether they're clean-centered versions or... Uh, uh, edited versions, edited, edited versions, or um, you know, remix versions, or any combination thereof. So, Serato Flip, watch out for that coming soon. Other than that, that's all I have for Serato DJ 1.7. I'm sure I skipped over a few things, but these are the major ones. If you want to see the full release log and to download the 1.7 uh, beta version, head on over to Serato.com. You have to go into the Serato DJ general discussion first. There'll be a sticky thread at the top saying Serato DJ 1.7 public beta. Uh, go into that and follow the link. I'll also post it in the description below. So this is my uh, first look at Serato DJ public beta version 1.7.